Hello, hello, my dearest friends. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Katya and I live in Volgograd in provincial Russia. So today I'm going to take you with me for a walk to show you my interesting Soviet neighborhood and to tell you some amazing facts about it. So if you are interested, let's go for a walk with me. You can see that it's such an amazing summer rainy day and I'm happy about it because it was very hot yesterday and it's still hot at home today but it is so nice outside my apartment block and i'm not sure that it looks very interesting <laughs> it's just such a typical modern apartment block you can see that it's very tall it has only one entrance in the russian it's called but yes i do not know that you have the same word in english maybe Hall, and it has a little bit more than 100 apartments 105 if I'm not mistaken but the first interesting fact in, about my Soviet neighborhood is that it is Kommunistiskaya street of course Kommunistiskaya literally means the street of communism but of course not all Russians are communists even though it's a popular stereotype actually there is not much connected with communism nowadays here in Russia. We live in capitalism, or is it called like this? The names of most streets here are somehow connected with communism, with Lenin, with the October Revolution and so on. It's not surprising. And the other names are somehow connected with uh, the war, with different military, you know, military facts military events with some armies, uh, some people, great people from here and so on. You can see a kindergarten there, but unfortunately it's a private kindergarten. I wanted to send Grigori there, but then I realized that it's too expensive for me. You can see typical five-story apartment blocks here. You can see that they look absolutely the same. There are no elevators in such apartment blocks, so it seems crazy to me. Uh, it's so hard to live there if you are not young, strong and healthy. If you are a young mom, if you are pregnant, if you have a stroller or if you have some health issues, it's really hard to live in such an apartment block, I think, because you need to go up and down many time, many times a day and you need to buy something bring to your apartment or carry some, something else. And it's really hard. There is a kids playground there, such a tiny one, but my children love it very much. And they often play there. Now we are approaching the street of Prague, Pražskaya in Russian. And I want to show you the first interesting object in my Soviet neighborhood. By the way, have you seen this? It's very typical of the Russian yards. We put such old tires and plant different young trees and flowers in them. Or we create different sculptures out of, made of these old tires and decorate our yards with them. Someone built a balcony. It is said that there are two disasters in Russia. The Russian roads and the Russian idiots. And you can see both these disasters. Someone left the garbage here, some idiot left it here. And you can see this horrible roads just absolutely disgusting incredible roads there is another playground there an old soviet one such a heavy one you know it's very easy to be injured by this entertainment but as i've already told you i want to show you 
another interesting object here and to tell you the second amazing fact about my Soviet neighborhood. There is an amazing Catholic church right in front of my apartment block, you can see it. It is one of the most famous Catholic churches in my region. It's so interesting, you can even see some Russian Catholics there. A Catholic priest and some people there eating a watermelon. <laughs> They're having some celebration, chatting, having fun. Maybe today is a Catholic holiday or something like this, I do not know. As you know, but most Russians are Orthodox Christians, we are not Catholics. And it looks so, you know, unusual for me to see so many Catholics here. It's a very beautiful church, a very beautiful place. Lots of flowers are situated in front of a, a local school. This building, it's a building of a public school. I've never been inside of this building because, uh, frankly speaking, I do not feel, you know, comfortable to go there inside just, just for fun. I think it's not so good. And what is more, I do not know the traditions because when you enter an Orthodox church, you should wear something on your head. You know, women should wear. A scarf or something like this we should cover our head it is not allowed to go without this cover into the church but I do not know the traditions so I've never been there but I'm going to add some photos for you this building appeared here more than 100 years ago and it was almost ruined during the Battle of Stalingrad and rebuilt then. And another interesting fact, of course during the period of the Red Army, Bolsheviki and so on, after the revolution, it was um, not ruined, but uh, this building was given to some club of the railway workers uh, you know that Bolsheviki were fighting with all types of religion. That's the main reason why it was forbidden to be a religious person here. And all the churches were destroyed and given to some organizations, to clubs, schools and so on. Such beautiful, beautiful flowers. I wanted to go around the church, but it still feels so inconvenient, so impolite walking here and looking at these people and filming something here. So I decided to go away. Maybe one day I will make a special video about this church for you. If you are interested, please write me in comments. Uh, maybe I will even try to go there or to talk to the priest because it's a very interesting topic. Oh, I'm not surprised. Such a typical picture of the Walgreens street in summer. And this is the street of communism. This is the street of Prague, Pražske. And this is the street of communism. Now we need to go there. I'm going to show you two more interesting places and tell you two more interesting stories.
surprised by the low level of these windows of the first floor, we call it the first floor in Russia, even though I know that it is called the ground floor in English. Anyway, we were taught so at school. And people live here, you can see it. I even saw a babushka there <laughs> looking at me. I think it's very hard to live here because it's so noisy from the road, it's so noisy from the people walking here. A coffee shop. So let's hurry because we need to go there. I do not want this video to be an hour long, but I could chat with you for a very long time and I could tell you something about everything here. A car wash, there are so many car washes here. And some weird, oh my god! Theater Kukol, it's a bus of the puppet theater. Just look at it. Such, such an old building. It looks like a private building, but there are some two stories houses there, some offices and so on. It's our local Silpo, but it is closed now. We call such tiny shops where you can buy absolutely everything from, you know, from water, butter, <laughs> vegetables, to toothpaste, toilet paper, something for your house and so on. We call such tiny shops Silpo. And I do not know why it is closed now. Maybe because all these shops uh, belong to small businesses, you know? And uh, that is why the owners of such shops, they usually work there inside with their relatives, mothers, fathers, wives, and so on. That is why they prefer to have days off. Kommunistischeskaya 54. The street of communism. Attention, it is not allowed to walk near the apartment block because this tile can fall onto your head. It is also typical of the Russian towns. As for me, I love such such plants. It's grapes here, it's wild grapes. And I like how beautiful it looks. And many local apartment blocks are, especially Soviet ones, are decorated by this. You can see no windows. I'm sure that it was done because, um, because of the sun, because the people do not want the sun and other people to look into their windows. Looks really good, I think. Very beautiful. Like a waterfall. And now we're approaching these two interesting places, this one and that one. This is Sberbank. Uh, it is a place where you can get a huge loan for buying an apartment or a house or something like this. I do not remember this word, because firstly I called it mortgage, but, but then I realized that it is something different. Anyway, you can get a loan there and we got the loan there for our amazing apartment it is very close to us and i won't tell you to tell you a sad and scary story about this place the roads are fantastic again just what is it <laughs> several layers of different roads I'm sure that it's one of the richest departments of Sberban in our region, maybe in the whole Russia. Of course, it's not surprising because more and more people prefer to get big loans, to buy an apartment. Первая государственная трудовая сберегательная касса в городе Царицыне была открыта 1 сентября. 1923 года. Well, maybe it was situated here. 
with this place. I do not know correctly, so I'm not going to tell you whether it is somehow connected or it's just some useful information. As I've already told you, more and more people nowadays prefer to get huge loans for 10 years, 15 years, or even 20, 25 or 30 years to buy an apartment or a house. And many other people like to complain about it because, oh, they say that it's, it's really slavery, it's uh, something incredible. Uh, at the same time, uh, they like to compare us to the United States of America, to other countries. And I'm sure that you all know that the situation is the same in the whole world. And we are lucky that we finally have the same opportunity to buy an apartment when we are young, to live somewhere, to pay for this apartment for the whole our life, but to have something, not to wait, not to try to save money, because it's absolutely unreal, especially when you have a big family, when you have children, just like me, just like my family. I'm sorry for this noise, something is being done there, something is being renovated, and I hope that you can hear me well, because I hate when I talk to you, tell you interesting stories, and then I can't use this footage. And this, this street, it's, it's not very big, but it's very noisy, I do not know why. Сбербанк коммунистическая 40. I wanted to show you the whole building, but it's so high. Now it is called just Сбер. It had a rebranding some time ago. It's huge, it's so tremendous. And looks so serious. <laughs> some time ago there was, there was a horrible story there, a real tragedy. And I want to show you something and tell you about it. This is the photo of Roman Gribiniu, who was some time ago killed right inside of this building. You know, I'm often asked, is Russia safe? Is it safe to stay here, to have a trip here, to walk in the streets and so on? And I can say that Russia is safe and my hometown is very safe. It is okay to walk in the streets at night, especially when you are somewhere here, closer to the city center. No matter what time it is, you can walk, you can, you know, have party, you can go somewhere to a club, to a restaurant, you can have money with you, you can have jewelry on you, it is absolutely safe. But sometimes some really ridiculous stories happen here and this one uh, was one of the most ridiculous that I've ever heard in my life. And I'm sure that it's one of the most um, crazy stories in the story of my hometown. This man, Roman Gribinyuk and some other people, they were in one chat for the parents of the children from the same form, class, from the same group from school. And they had an argument. And somehow one lady got very offended by his words, uh, even though he didn't say something, you know, something really bad. Because I read that messages just like, most people here and it was just written something just you know he said in russian it is it means stop um, you know stop speaking about nothing and stop procrastinating <laughs> it is not very offensive it's just such a typical phrase of our you know speech and uh, this lady got very offended and she told her brother and her husband about that event and they met that man here in this office. They had another argument and then they fought it and he died. It was just crazy because there was no reason for such a huge argument. There was no reason for a fight. They were just discussing some extra classes for their children at school and, you know, there are always some arguments and it's often hard to communicate in such Viber chats, in, in Viber or WhatsApp or something like this, but there, there is absolutely no need to argue, especially like that. 
And it was a big tragedy, it was a big uh, event for the whole town. We read about it in every newspaper, in every, you know, social media. It is crazy and super, super weird. Uh, especially when it's absolutely safe here. When something incredible happens, we all know about it. Just like in a big village. And such events happen really rarely. From time to time, um, I think one such great events in a year or several years. And we always know them. It is sad, my friends. And it was sad, useless and stupid. So you can see that it's the weirdest place of my Soviet neighborhood. And let's go there. Oh, I wanted to show you. You can see the lady from the roof of the planetarium. This one. So beautiful. I want to film an excursion there for you. Because it's one of my favorite places in Volkrad. But now I want to show you this. It is an emergency station. And now it is almost closed. I can see some officers there. And these windows, not windows, but doors, they are closed. But um, on working days they are often open. And you can see all these vehicles, beautiful firefighter vehicles. It is главное управление МЧС России по Волгоградской области. I can see some officers approaching me. I hope that it's not forbidden to film it. <laughs> Let's run away. Some time ago I was very surprised why there are so many firefighter cars around. I can constantly hear this noise from firefighter cars. But then I realized that they just start from this building to other districts of the town. And sometimes, very often, I should say, they go near my apartment block, near my yard. That is why I can hear them. I do not know whether you can see it or not, but the officers are staying there and looking at me. I look like an idiot again. I'm not going to go there. Maybe some other day. Let's go to another amazing, very interesting place. And now I'm going to show you another amazing place. Really Soviet one. It appeared here in the Soviet Union. And it was popular in the Soviet Union, but now it's abandoned. Whoa, I'm just like bald and bankrupt. I'm going to show you abandoned Soviet places. This is the building of the tourists' Soviet railway station. It was a special railway station only for tourists, built here in the Soviet Union. Many years ago, when it was not allowed to travel abroad and only few people could get from the Soviet Union somewhere, our people like to travel along the Soviet Union. <laughs> How many times am I going to say Soviet? I am just like bald and bankrupt again. So my dear friends, I do not want to copy him, but I'm going to talk about Soviet things. There was a special, popular trip for the Soviet people by train, visiting many, many towns. And there was a special Soviet railway station for tourists in each such town. Those people used to come here early in the morning to this station. There were a lot of buses here for tourists. The buses could take them and bring whatever they wanted to different interesting places, to show them the sights of the city, and so on. And then, in the evening, those people used to return back here, get to their train, and go to another town. They were going by train only at night, and having fun in different towns and cities every day. One day for one city or town. I think it's an amazing idea. It's much more interesting than Trans-Siberian trip because people just sit in this, inside of a train and they go, go, go and do nothing interesting. I 
Stephen Stefan. But then this beautiful place was abandoned and now it's not used at all. By the way, this picture is called Mirvan. That literally means peace to you. We wish you peace. It looks so beautiful and it's one of the most beautiful and complicated Soviet works of art in my hometown. This railway station used to be very beautiful, but some other mosaics are now ruined, covered by all this stuff, and maybe they are lost. It is a real disaster because they ruined the monument, I should say, the monument of the Soviet epoch. Now there are only car washes. Oh my, oh my God, cafes and canteens there as there are a lot of offices nearby. Unfortunately, speaking about all the Soviet places and most beautiful Soviet works of art, buildings and so on, I always feel just like bald and bankrupt. I do not know why our people do not care about this period of our history and about everything left after it, because this art, it is fantastic. It's so beautiful. I think that it's much better than the modern art. Oh, such holes, some plants. And frankly speaking, I feel very sad about it, about the situation and everything happening here, because I think that it's so beautiful. Just look at this work. I read about this work of art, about these beautiful girls, and the process of creating it was very complicated. And now it's just staying here, getting ruined, abandoned, destroyed, and so on. some of my friends and relatives about this place no one even knew about it no one knew what it was where I used to call this part uh, the tourist station because some time ago many students used to go by buses to different resorts from here and some children used to go to their summer camps from here from this place but no one knows the history of this place, no one knows anything about this work of art. We have no memory and no money for all this. And we have only Mr. Bolden Bankrupt who can come and film all this disaster. Make views, earn money and unfortunately at the same time can make fun of us stupid people who somehow forgot their history. It is sad. You can see that there used to be a big square here uh, where the tourists could come, go, get to their buses and go to the city center and wherever they wanted. At the time, this, the, the place of this railway station is really good because you can just cross the street, go there and go right to the panorama. It is situated down the street. You need just 10 minutes or so, or even less, if you can walk fast. And now there are so many car washes, 24 here. So many abandoned places here. Oh, I almost fell down from here. <laughs> I wanted to show you, wow, what beautiful graffiti, but I didn't want to show you it. I wanted to show you this, just look at it. It is a presentation of my hometown for the tourists coming here to that station. The Barona Stalingrada, Lenin, Orden Lenina. It's so beautiful, it's just fantastic. I adore such works of art, Soviet works of art, made of such tiny, tiny pieces. 
it's so beautiful. But now there is an ugly cafe, or what is it? A cafe where you can buy shawarma, a burger, or some greasy pies in front of it. Something else. Everything is ugly, I should say. Absolutely ugly. This street just looks just like it needs to be cleaned and absolutely changed, renovated, rebuilt. Because all this beauty is covered by a, a big layer of this mud stuff, something disgusting. I've already shown you many such works of art. Some of them are abandoned in bad places, in ruined places. And another beautiful masterpiece like this is situated in the Academy of Physical Culture, where my children often go and where they plan to study. It's another super beautiful picture, Soviet picture. And I'm happy that it is safe. It's in a good place and nothing bad can happen to it. And finally we are going to go down that street, around Spirbank. Uh, it is the street of the 13th army. In Russian it's called 13th Gvardiyskoy Divizia. I do not know how to translate it in English. I'm sorry my dearest friends. I'll do it as always. So we're here. And I'm going to show you my apartment block and my neighborhood from another angle. Something weird is happening. There were two men on the roof of this Gazprom building. They were shouting to me. It was strange. And now I'm going to be passing by this building one more time. I can see no officers, maybe I can film something for you. I do not want to be arrested. By the way, there is a beautiful museum there inside of this building, a museum of the Russian Emercom. When I was a school child, I used to visit it, and Sanya used to visit it. And I'm sure that one day Nina will also visit it. Such beautiful vehicles. And now we're approaching the square of Lenin. It is not surprising, communism there, Lenin there. <laughs> we are just like in Soviet Union, but we are in modern Volgograd, in a beautiful modern provincial Russian town. It's not exactly Lenin Street, it is Lenin Prospect. And I'm registered at Lenina Street because my mom lives there. Her apartment is situated at Lenina Street. And everyone is always confused. Too much, too much Lenin. <laughs> too many streets under his name. And you can see a small piece of this, this thing, of panorama. The main museum of my hometown, the panorama of the Seven Great Battle. There is the Pavlov's house, the legendary Pavlov's house, right behind this Lenin. A Lada, beautiful Lada X-ray. Oh, someone is listening to me. And this is Dom Yunarmi. Dom Officerov. It is called the House of the Officers. No such a military building. Center, Central Sportive Club Army. And CSKA is also situated here. And every evening some people dance salsa here. It looks so beautiful. Maybe one day I'll film it for you. There is a metro tram station here called the Square of Lenin. This is the entrance to it, and you can get from one side of the road to another underground here. I like it very much because 
my children can go from there here, go underground and go to their school. It is situated behind these buildings. The Volgrad Metro Tram is one of the local miracles. I love it. I adore it. My children love it. And this is one of its stations. Volgograd for 130 years. It is an old poster. I think it's already several years old. It is beautiful. That is why it's keep on, it keeps on hanging here. Such a station. Oh, such an active babushka running to this bus. And here you can buy the most popular modern Russian street food. Blini, Blini coffee soup kasha. You can buy coffee, but I'm mostly interested in Russian Blini in ten case. It works 24 seven. You can just come here and buy something. And sometimes when I walk in the evening with Grigori, I buy some tea here, some Blini. Maybe one day I will film a video about it. Write me in comments if you're interested. I know that one of my best friends loves this blini very much, even though he's not from Volgograd. And maybe one day I will film a special video about them for you. I think it's a good idea. It is a shop where you can buy some books. And there is a supermarket there. And I'm going to return back home along this street. Well, my dearest friends, I'm sure that it's enough for today. I've already filmed so much to you. I'm sorry for all the noises. You can see that my hometown and my neighborhood is rather noisy, even on Sunday afternoon. I'm very sorry for it. And thank you very much for watching. Wait for an apartment tour filmed in my apartment, my new apartment here. See you very soon back on our channel. Subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. I'm always glad to see you here.